في كتير طرق وسط الحياة تاهو فيها ناس وطرق تبان مفروشة وارد وتنتهي بألم ودي لكن الطريق للفرحة وطريق الخلاص عند المسيح أصل المسيح هو الحياة هو الطريق Welcome to the Way TV. Always glad to be back. We've got an army of 300,000 Muslim, mostly men, coming over to the United States, voted in by Congress, our Congress. It wasn't just Obama. It was the Republicans and the Democrats together. Tonight, I'm going to talk about criminal organizations amongst these Muslim men, all documented. We got all the proof, evidence, and facts about it. I'm going to be talking about the criminal organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. They are also on campus. They're known as the Muslim Student Association. They are at uh, a U of A and ASU, Arizona State University and University of Arizona. They're at UCLA, USC, San Diego State, Georgetown University. They're at uh, University of Arkansas, University of Texas, Oregon State, University of Oregon. Idaho, Idaho State, they're Boise State, they're all over the United States, Oklahoma, Texas, Iowa, Kansas, North Dakota, South Dakota, they're in Hawaii, they're in Alaska, they're in all of the major colleges in Canada and in, the, in Europe. And I'm going to be talking from the Nuremberg Trial. This is the book, The Nuremberg Trial, by Robert H. Jackson, our Supreme Court Justice, who threw that in that book, established the guilt of the Nazis under criteria, principles, and precedents for declaring collective criminality. It is my contention, and Ted Cruz agrees with it and has tried to pass laws, that the Muslim Brotherhood, the Muslim Student Association, is a criminal group. Council on American Islamic Relations, Islamic Society of North America, in accordance with what Senator Ted Cruz has published and has tried to get through the legal court system while he was a senator. The Muslim Brotherhood is a very dangerous group. Up here, you see the Quran right there. Down here at the bottom, I apologize because we got a green screen behind us, is Arabic from the Quran. It's Surah 860, which basically says to terrorize and wage war, kill the infidel. The Muslim 300,000 coming from the Middle East through Europe and over here, the vast majority of those men are controlled and under the Muslim Brotherhood. Clip number six, clip number six. More than 50 million people are displaced around the world because of conflict, poverty, persecution, and climate change. Three of the biggest gateways for migrants and refugees into Europe are through the Western, Central, and Eastern Mediterranean. To tackle the unprecedented numbers of people risking their lives to enter its borders, Europe is spending hundreds of millions of euros to fortify its frontiers. We don't know how many people are buried here. There are no names, no nothing. It's like these people never even existed. So what we're watching there, what the Muslim Brotherhood and ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Boko Haram, all those guys, if they were to get a big armada together like we did in World War II and try to sail up into 
southern Europe and invade and come in, they wouldn't stand a chance. But what they did, and we've talked about this before, was they used our sense of freedom of religion as a cloaking device, as a means to open up Europe, come into Europe, and then come into the United States. And we have discussed many times on this television show that the First Amendment absolutely is not absolute. And in fact, for proof, this is the leader of the San Diego County Mosque. Notice in this hand, he's got a gun. In this hand, he's got a rocket launcher. I went to his mosque sometime in late 2001, early 2002. He was not there. Uh, by that time, he transferred to Virginia. But the people he left at his mosque immediately, with my experience in guerrilla warfare, cell warfare, counterintelligence, as an uh, enlisted and officer in the Marine Corps, I knew exactly after being to a number of mosques and talking to a number of Muslim Brotherhood that this was a terrorist cell, a forward operating base, and it was linked in with the other mosques in San Diego, in Corona, in Los Angeles, in Dallas, in Arkansas, and all over the place. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood has deep roots back in with the Nazis. In World War II, the Nazis, Actually, the Muslim Brotherhood started in 1928, but a lot of the folks that became Muslim Brotherhood fought with the Germans in World War I before they were known as Nazis. It was the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire and Germany and Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, were working together to destroy the French and the English. Now, this is a picture here of Husani and Adolf Hitler. The German nationals in Germany had grown quickly tired. They didn't want to kill the Jews anymore, so Hitler, being the horrible monster he was, went to this guy Husani, and he brought him in to lead the Nazis in World War II. So when people say, gee, they act like Nazis, well, they were Nazis. And in fact, the Nazis can be seen in this picture. These are European Nazis, Waffen-SS. If you look here, you can't see it, but you can go online and just Google the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and the Nazi connection comes right up. Right here is the skull and crossbones of the Waffen SS. The book he's reading is Islam and the Jews basically how to kill him. On his lapel here is an Islamic sword. These are Waffen SS. These are criminals. These are criminals. Adolf Hitler was judged to be a criminal in World War II. And the Muslim Brotherhood, these guys have all been working together. They're all Nazis. This is a funny picture of President Obama, the Muslim Brotherhood. Again, down here is from the Quran. This is the Quran here. Muslim Brotherhood criminal organization. It is definitely a criminal organization, and it does fit the criteria, principles, and precedents for declaring collective criminality as discovered in the Nuremberg trials, all in accordance with Anglo-American common law, 100% with American common law. So down here at the bottom, the Muslim Brotherhood declares they're a criminal group because that Arabic, which is the centerpiece for the Muslim Brotherhood, for ISIS, for Taliban, for Al-Qaeda, for Boko Haram, all of the different Muslim terrorist groups subscribe and they pledge loyalty to the Quran and this verse, 860 from the Quran, which means to terrorize, wage war, which means to kill the non-Muslims. This is the leader, the Speaker of the House, in the United States Congress, and as he who pushed through that Omni bill that was bringing in, is bringing in 300,000 of these Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood warriors, criminals, clip number one. A New Year's Eve attack on scores of women in Germany has one city in that country on edge. Over the weekend, thousands took to the streets of Cologne to protest a string of vicious sexual attacks by men who were reportedly of Arab and North African descent. Those attacks come as German leaders face mounting pressure to deal with the influx of migrants from the Middle East. George Thomas has the details. Tensions are rising in Germany's fourth largest city. Protesters took to the streets of Cologne over the weekend, furious about a string of shocking sexual assaults. I am here today because we're all very sad about the things that happened here. 
The attacks happened during New Year's celebrations in Cologne's main square, when hundreds of young men, reportedly of Arab and North African origin, attacked scores of women. More than 500 women have filed criminal complaints. Great job. Mina's on it today. So, again, I got to repeat this. The Muslim Brotherhood is a criminal group. They've been declared criminal, and of all places, Saudi Arabia, who funds them, it's a grotesque protection racket, as George Shult, former Secretary of State under Reagan, pointed out that if the Saudi royal family didn't pay off the criminals, the terrorists, the Muslim Brotherhood, Wahhabis, Salafis, and all the rest of them in Saudi Arabia, they would kill them. So you got the, the Muslim Brotherhood is a criminal group in accordance with the criteria, principles, and precedents for declaring collective criminality. And we see that on University of Arizona, at US, uh, uh, Arizona State University, and that the Muslim Brotherhood definitely is involved with the Nazis in World War II, and currently, right now. In fact, we did our outreach in Kingman, Arizona, a couple of days ago, and the neo-Nazis showed up supporting the Muslims because the two, both of them, they hate the Jews. They hate the Christians, too. Hitler, according to the Nuremberg trial, had to create a brand new religion. He was not a Christian. He hated Christianity. He thought it was for weaklings and sissies. And he had to create his own weird religion in order to get the World War II going in the Holocaust. He had to arrest the Christian pastors and priests and throw them in jail to make things happen. Okay, this is a crazy clip, but this is what they do. Muslim young men do in Muslim countries, in Egypt, in Iraq, in Iran, in Afghanistan, in Saudi Arabia. This is a crazy clip. The game is to grab a couple of girls and gang rape them. All right. And there's some crazy dude on this thing walking around with kind of like a flamethrower. It, it is, but this is what Islam does. And it's all based on what did Muhammad do? And what did Muhammad do? He liked to rape women and little girls. And he was necrophiliac and a cross-dresser. We've proved that time and time again on the show. When this show is posted, you'll see on the same place all of my clips and all of the stuff I'm saying is all documented there. Okay, so clip number 11. Clip number 11. That's okay. Go ahead and cut. That's okay. It, it went on from there. Mina did a great job. We got a lot of clips to go through. So again, you have a um, criminal group. You have a criminal group known as the Muslim Brotherhood, and they do fit the criteria, principles, and precedents for declaring collective criminality. When that's done, just being a member of the group, you go to jail. Like, you know, in the old days, there was a Ku Klux Klan and the Hell's Angels, and then the Supreme Court came in and did some mojo crazy magic, and all of a sudden, these lunatics are allowed to walk the streets and called freedom of expression. I, I can't even understand it, even though I've been involved in multiple First Amendment lawsuits. I'm pretty good on it. But then again, the people we have in the nine uh, Supreme Court justices, most of them, they're not judges. They are advocates. They are pushing their agenda their agenda for murdering the unborn, for bringing in Islam and destroying Christianity. So this is a criminal, criminal group, 
criminal group known as the Muslim Brotherhood and some of their affiliates are the Muslim Student Association, Council on American Islamic Relations, Islamic uh, Society of North America, Islamic Circle of North America. Again, back to the logo for the Muslim Brotherhood down here, we've got that verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 60 of the Quran, which means when you read it, to strike terror in the hearts of the infidel that you and me wage war, which means to kill us. That is enough that we know that is a criminal group, and it's funded by Zakat. And insanely as it is, our director of the CIA today has um, gone out and spoke and raised funds for Zakat, which is used which is used to fund terrorism, the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS, the um, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and all these other guys. And here I have from the UN, you can't see it, but the Zakat, I can read some very prescient things here. Zakat from Jean-Charles Brassard, who's probably the top, the top expert in the world on tracking down terrorist funds. And Zakat, he puts down which is one of the five pillars of Islam. They're supposed to give a percentage of their money and their assets to helping the poor. Well, they define poor as ISIS, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, and the rest of the terrorist groups. So they're using people like the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States on all these college campuses at UCLA, USC, at Georgetown, Georgia State, at uh, um, Rutgers, Syracuse, all those other schools. And they're all of the businesses, the mom and pop shops that are doing business, gasoline uh, stations and things like that, they're skimming off zakat. Hezbollah, Lebanon, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and all resistance forces vividly express the will of the nation. That's the Ummah, the body of believers. You see, the nation for Islam is not Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, or Syria. No, the nation for Islam is the body, the collective body of believers, what we in Christianity call a church. They constitute this Ummah, the nation of Islam. They constitute the first line in the defense of peoples and states and their rights, causes, and sanctities through jihad, killing people, and the mujahideen, their warriors. They represent the honor, pride, and dignity of Muslims everywhere, the Ummah, and reflect the human ambitions of all oppressed peoples. That's the Muslims. When the Muslims are not allowed to kill you and attack you and rape you, that's considered to be oppression what we consider to be civil liberties, that women are not battered and beaten and thrown down and kicked and raped, when they're not allowed to do that, they consider that to be oppression. The Al-Qaeda network, that Al-Qaeda network, which includes ISIS, Taliban, Boko Haram, Muslim Brotherhood, the Al-Qaeda network extensively utilized in the world weakness of legal rules to rely on funds diverted from the zakat. Now that's crazy. It's not an abuse of religion. It is fundamental and one of the five de jure portions of Islam. Okay, clip number two. Clip number two. Make a yameen. كان نظاما موجودا قبل الاسلام كل الامم كل الدول مش الجاهليه وبس وكان اي حد يتاجر يتاجر في الحر او في الحره ويبيع فيه اللي بنسميه بيع الاحرار زي ما بيحدث الان اللي هو بيع الاعضاء والاحرار نفسهم وكلام بالده لكن لما الاسلام جه بقى نظمه نظمه بإيه؟ إن لا يكون إلا عن طريق الحرب المشروعة بين المسلمين وبين أعدائهم يعني لو إحنا حاربنا إسرائيل وإسرائيل دي مختصبة للأرض بل ومعتدية على البشر وعلى العقيدة وطبعا إحنا بنتكلم إيه المسلمين So what she means is if we're in self-defense if, if these guys, the Muslim Brotherhood, these crazy lunatics using zakat, these guys, the Muslim Brotherhood, the Muslim Student Association, Council on American Islamic Relations, these 300,000 guys come to the United States. If we try to defend our women, 
we oppose them. We are the evil guys, and when they capture our girls, then it's fair game. They can rape them. Now, I'm telling you right now, I was enlisted and officer in the Marine Corps. My son's active duty Army, and rest assured, while there are some discrepancies and there are some guys that have been thrown in prison for life and hung, never in our battle planning, I was a battle planner for the Marine Corps, so was my son in the Army, never as a battle planner do I factor in kidnapping and raping women. Never. I don't know from World War II, Korea, all of the Desert Storm and everything, I don't know of any battle planner in the United States who's ever factored in kidnapping, brutalizing, and raping women. But that is part of battle planning in Islam. Clip number three. Clip number three. Ich habe da jetzt wohl richtig einen Fass aufgemacht mit den Vorgängern Silvester hier in Köln. Am 31.12.2015 habe ich gearbeitet in einem Fünf-Sterne-Hotel genau gegenüber vom Dom. Äh, als ich äh, da angefangen habe zu arbeiten, habe ich gedacht, ja, ich hatte einen entspannten Abend mit äh, sehr gut situierten Menschen. Die Karten haben so ab 300 Euro aufwärts gekostet. Es waren alles Gäste so ab 40 Jahre drin. Äh, plötzlich gegen 21, 22 Uhr ging es los, dass schon auf dem äh, Gelände außen das mit dem Hotel nichts zu tun hatte, eine Messestecherei war, wurde einer schwer verletzt, Krankenwagen war da, Polizei, und dann eskalierte das Ganze. Die äh, Menschen, die wir vor drei Monaten noch mit Teddybären und Wasserflaschen in München am Hauptbahnhof empfangen haben, haben angefangen auf den Dom zu schießen, angefangen auf die Bereitschaftspolizisten zu schießen, die dann mit Helmen auf die Domplatte mussten, um diesem ganzen Gewaltpotenzial Einhalt zu gewähren. Ähm Good job, Mina. Now, as they come through, these criminals come across. Now, this is Fox News, Prince Al Walid. When we go in and we study the reports from Jean Charles Brissard here, the world's foremost expert in tracking down terrorism, we find out that Prince Al Walid, who owns a significant fraction of Fox News and Disney, Disney Europe, Disney World, and Disneyland here, and this character here, Prince Al Walid, is all part of that zakat system if you go to anaheim or orlando florida or where euro disney is you will find all kinds of muslim shops and they're doing the zakat and they're doing the hawala where they're transferring all the money so that they can blow up and kill people it's all part of this criminal group called the muslim brotherhood in my opinion the muslim brotherhood has orchestrated this invasion by all of the Muslims into Europe and in the United States. And then we have, sadly, fools like Paul Ryan, who thinks it's okay to bring these folks in here. He doesn't understand that, indeed, common law, all common law is based on some kind of religion. We've talked about that many times. The symbiotic relationship between religion and common law, it's very simple to establish it. If you look at the 57 Muslim countries of the world, they either have a picture of the Quran or a crescent moon or some reference to Islam and their flag in their constitution. It always states that Islam is the basis of their law, their fundamental law, their common law. Three nations who didn't, Malaya, Indonesia, and Turkey, but all three are quickly changing over into that insanity. The common law of Islam, of the body of believers, of the 57 Muslim countries, is all based on Islam. Then you have Old Europe, which was known as Christendom, the domain of Christ. And a great example was at the times of Christopher Columbus, who sailed the ocean blue in 1492. He sailed with red crosses on his flag. He was escaping the Mediterranean to the Atlantic to find another route because the Muslims under the Ottoman Turks the Muslims had the crescent moon on their sails. So you had the crescent moon, the common law of Islam that was shown in the crescent moon. You had the common law of Europe on the, on the sail of Columbus, which was a cross. And those two are totally diametrically opposed. They cannot co coexist. The Muslims will always go out and destroy the Christians. I know you can talk about the Crusades of 11 and 1200 years ago, that was a long time ago, and frankly, from my study of the Crusades, it was a very small defensive operation after 500 years of being constantly attacked and raped and brutalized and destroyed by the Muslims. Also, you have in Fox News, here's the mosque in Culver City by Santa Monica in Los Angeles, inaugurated by George Herbert Walker Bush. 
This is a very terrorist mosque. I've been to it. It's very dangerous. We had a number of police there to protect us. The Muslims were out of control. Clearly, they were Al-Qaeda and Taliban and ISIS types and obviously Muslim Brotherhood at this mosque in Los Angeles. Very, very dangerous. And this mosque was inaugurated by George Herbert Walker Bush, John Sununu, Gerald Ford, Governor of California, uh, Pete Wilson, and also John Sununu, Chief of Staff. Here's the state of the world, how the East sees America, and this is how we in the West and the Europe, how we see it. The Muslims are here with their eyes open. They are coming here as criminals, as a criminal organization governed by the Quran, led by the Muslim Brotherhood, whose motto says that they follow the Quran. The Quran is their um, constitution and their job, according to the Muslim Brotherhood logo at the bottom. That Arab I guess showed you was to terrorize the infidel, wage war against them, and kill them. The West is still not awaken. This is from Obama. Is, ISIL is not Islamic, or ISIS is not Islamic. No religion condones the killing of innocents, and the vast majority of ISIS victims have been Muslims. Well, that may be true on the Muslims, because they're around them, and ISIS will just kill anybody they don't like, because they are a criminal organization, which is the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Muslim Student Association, Council on American Islamic Relations, all fit the criteria, principles, and precedents for declaring collective criminality. The Muslim Brotherhood logo, again, I like showing this because it kind of floats around here. I got the negative symbol, whoop, the negative symbol going through it this way. <laughs> goes opposite. And down here at the bottom, it's kind of erased, but that's uh, Surah 860 from the Quran to terrify and wage war and kill the infidels and to use zakat to fund it which is one of the five pillars of Islam. Okay, clip number four, clip number four. Okay, so in my reading, this is the flag of Saudi Arabia. This is the Shahada, which is one of the five pillars. There is no Allah but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. And here's a sword representing that they will kill you if you don't convert or you've got to pay the, the tax. And that's all done with Zakat. And that's all done with the Nazi proclamation working with the Muslim Brotherhood. Again, with that down there. And so we'll go to clip number five, and then we'll be all done. Germany's chancellor fired the latest warning today as European leaders seem to grow more wary of immigrants, both from inside Europe and outside. Mark Phillips has more. It's a political ad in this month's election in Sweden. You don't have to speak the language to understand the message. An elderly white Swedish woman is being threatened by burqa-clad Muslim women. The ad was considered so offensive it was banned. But the right-wing Swedish Democratic Party made such significant gains in the elections on an anti-immigration platform that others came out to protest. There are a lot of people here in Sweden that does not agree with the things that has happened. A wave of anti-immigrant sentiment is sweeping across Europe. The forced expulsion from France of 8,000 Romanian gypsies so far this year is just the most visible example. This is a situation I had thought Europe would not have to witness. So as I learned years ago from this leader in San Diego, California, Anwar Alaki, in a mosque in La Mesa, just on the outskirts of the city of San Diego, when I went to his mosque and I watched how vicious and crazy he was, Anwar Alaki, Anwar Alaki, a leader in the United States. They thought he was a moderate. They brought him over to the Pentagon right after the World Trade Center. Uh, Daily Beast and some of the other news guys that interviewed me said that he hadn't been ra radicalized by that time. And of course, at that time, he had already helped out blowing up the World Trade Center. And then we find out in the Paris attack that he was the principal trainer and inspiration for the guys who went in 
and did the Charlie Hebdo attack in January as a forerunner of the big giant attack where they killed over 130 people in Paris. He was also affiliated with the San Bernardino Mosque. And so when I talk about this stuff, you can call me any name you want to. I don't care. I've been out there. I've been on the streets. The Muslim Brotherhood is a criminal group. They have been declared to be a criminal group in accordance with the precedents and criteria for criminal organizations by Saudi Arabia, by Egypt, by Syria. They should be outlawed. They will soon be outlawed in the United States. The reason they haven't been outlawed so far is because about 95% of the mosques in the United States and at least 75 to 90% of the Muslims in the United States are members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Until next time, adieu. Let's see.